Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I've got a good video for you. This video came about because of things I see on forums and social media about people not installing this product correctly and actually ruining their injection pump. So I'm going to show you today how to install a governor spring in a VE injection pump. Now after the basic pump tweaks that you can do to your stock injection pump, the governor spring is by far the best bang for the buck. It's only $20 and the amount of change you'll feel in the responsiveness of your truck is incredible. Now you're probably wondering where did I get my governor spring? Uh, many of you know that I shop at thehungrydiesel.com for all my parts, my crew cab, my single cab. I've used their site for years now. I've known Eric for quite a few years now. Eric's got the best customer service hands down out of anyone I've shopped for parts from. Uh, he's willing to text with me when I can't figure something out and we figure it out together. Great customer service. So I ordered this governor spring from thehungrydiesel.com. Now that brings me to the next kind of exciting announcement. Uh, when I knew I was going to film this video, um, and I didn't have to film this video, I actually didn't even care to do a governor spring on the single cab, but when I saw the people running into issues, I knew I had to film this video to help all of you guys out. So I reached out to Eric at The Hungry Diesel to see if he would set up some type of promo code for my viewers to get some type of discount off of his products. Now I don't get any kickbacks from this, but I'm happy to announce that Eric was super gracious and set up a promo code, which I'm going to put on the screen right now, Decent First Gen, and this will save you 10% on your whole order at thehungrydiesel.com. This is a great opportunity for you. Like I said, the Governor Springs only $20. I actually bought it in combination with a fuel pin as well. So I'm going to have a video about how to do a fuel pin as well. But with a 10% discount, you can get that combo for under $100, which is a great bang for the buck, and it'll really wake up your first-gen Cummins. So thank you, Eric, for helping us out with this video. I'm not getting any kickbacks for that. Like I said, I just wanted to help you guys out and help you get access to really good products. So let's get into the video, guys. Um, first things first, got the single cab here. That's the truck we're going to be installing this governor spring and fuel pin on. Um, we've got rain in the forecast in the next couple hours so i'm actually going to pull the crew cab out let it sit out in the rain unfortunately and put the single cab into the garage so if it does start raining it's not going to put a damper on this project so let me flip those around real quick and i'll catch back up with you guys right when i get done with that all right here we are in the engine bay this is the driver's side this is your injection pump I'm not going to explain too much about what it does, how it works. I'm just going to do a basic how to install this governor spring. So just to clear things out of the way so you guys can see better and so I can get around the pump a little bit better, I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to take the upper radiator hose off and just fold it back. I'm going to take the throttle linkage off. There's a couple nuts on here. Just remove them. It falls out of the way. The other thing that does help, I'll probably pull the dipstick out. I might actually just remove it and, and uh, move it out of the way. Anything you can do to make more room, the easier this will be. And you guys will see as I'll show you, there's a couple Allen screws on this modification that you have to get to that are very difficult to get to. So the more room you have, the better. So I'm going to move all that stuff and I'll catch back up with you guys right when that's done. All right, if you have an automatic transmission, this is the throttle position sensor. Um, and it's bolted on through the pump top. So we're going to have to take these three Allen bolts out to take the throttle position sensor off. And then we'll probably just leave this bolt in because we don't actually need to take the top of the pump off for this modification. So I'll take that off and catch up with you. All right, the throttle position sensor's off. I just put these Allen bolts back in here because I'm not going to take the pump top off. In another video, I'll show you how to put a different fuel pin in and you'll need to take that off to do that. So next thing we need to do is take this boost reference line off of here and I'm going to actually show you guys how to do that because there's a couple o-rings in here that you don't want to lose. So just loosen this bolt and this is a banjo bolt which means it allows air to actually flow through it. So as I unthread this 
there's a washer right here on this side and then there's also one right up here against the pump top so when you pull this bolt out the tendency is for this washer to fall so make sure as you pull it out you've kind of got your hand underneath ready to catch that washer perfect there you can see that washer stayed on there nicely i'm actually just going to leave the banjo bolt in that reference line for now um, but if if the washers are loose on there i would pull pull the banjo bolt and the washers off so you don't lose them all right now there's another banjo bolt right here so this one we have to loosen up and kind of swing out of the way as well Okay, I've got that disconnected and that one I just pulled the bolt out and I'm just setting it aside for now. Our next step is to remove the throttle lever through this Allen bolt, so I'll go ahead and do that. Um, I would advise at this point to take some good pictures of how the springs are set up. There's one here. And there's also this big spring underneath and you can see how it's clocked. So. Either pause the video so you know what that looks like or take pictures of your own and you can see that little plastic piece wedged between those two posts. Uh, it's important to get this back exactly how it was. There's the throttle lever. So after the throttle lever comes off, you'll notice there's a plastic washer and a little metal washer as well. So pull those out, keep those safe, and then I'm going to show you another important part. I'm going to get a wire brush and kind of clean this off real quick so you can see what I'm going to show you. All right, so let me show you this part. This is one of the most common things I hear people making mistakes with and wondering why their truck runs like crap once they get it all put back together. So you can see right here this uh, kind of threaded screw that comes up through this part of the throttle lever. And then you can see all these little tick marks in this part of the throttle lever. This is called throttle indexing. So what you need to do when you, when you take your pump apart to put this governor spring in is remember which tick mark does the line in the screw line up with. And 95% and of the time, it lines up with the second one down. That's the case in my case as well. So this is important when you put your pump back together, you've got to line that up exactly right. So now we're going to take this assembly off and all it does is just pulls straight up and you'll feel this spring is kind of loaded on the bottom of it. So pull that up. Straight off. And that little plastic piece will allow you to pull that spring up. So here's what we're looking at right here. So keep all this together. You've got the spring, a couple plastic washers, and then this part of the throttle lever. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside. All right, we have everything disconnected from the top half of the pump that we need to disconnect. Now comes the fun part, okay? So there are four allen head bolts that are holding the top half of the pump on so i'm going to grab my camera and kind of see if i can use a light and show you there's one's very difficult to see and the other one's a little harder to see these two right here are kind of the softballs these are easy to take out the other two are a little more difficult so let me show you those real quick All right, so like I said, there's four. There's one here, one here, and coming to the back side of the pump, there's one right there. OK, 
Okay, so not this one here, but this one back here. So the last one's back on the back side. See if I can get my camera to zoom. And I'm having trouble even getting my finger in here, but it's right there. That's the last one, okay? So we're gonna take each of those out. In order to get to that very back one, you have to have a ball end Allen wrench. That's really the only way to do it. I'll show footage of me trying to get at all these and take them out. So in order to get to this screw right here, I'm actually gonna take this throttle stop screw out, okay? So I'm gonna use a Sharpie and just make a mark to show me where that was at. So when I put it back, it's right in the same place. So removing this screw, you can get to this Allen bolt without removing the screw. I'm just going to do it so you guys can see better and it will make access to the Allen head a little bit better. So there's that throttle stop screw. Okay, first one is broken loose. Okay, I've got the rounded Allen head on that screw. I'm gonna actually grab some pliers so I can get better leverage on this end of the Allen head. There it goes, it broke loose. So this is a little tedious because I have to pull the Allen key out, but I'm just going to keep working at it until it comes all the way out. Okay. That back one's not all the way out yet, but what I'm going to do is loosen all the other ones so I can lift the pump top up just a little bit because as that Allen bolt is backing out, it's actually running into the idle adjustment screw. So there's one of the Allen screws. They're all the same, so don't worry about trying to remember which one goes where. And you can see a little bit of fuel just started to drip out. So have something underneath to wipe all that up or catch it all kitty litter or something. Okay, there's number two. Get this one out. Here's number three. So that back one's loose. I'm gonna wiggle the pump top loose. Okay, popped up just a little bit. I'm gonna try and get that back one out just a little bit more. All right, that last one's out, so Next thing you need to do, so you can't just pull the pump top off at this point, okay? What you have to do, this throttle indexing shaft has to go down through the shaft. So just give it a couple light taps with something and it'll push down in there.
There we go. So that is the top half of the pump. All right, so the pump top is off. Now, if you're doing this project, you're hoping that you don't run into what I am just running into. It's not a horrible thing, but let me show you this. That says 366. That right there is a 3200 RPM governor spring. You'll often hear this spring referred to as the 366 spring or the 3200 RPM governor spring, and that's why. It's the last three digits of the part number are 366. So a stock spring will say 386 on it. So this is good news and bad news. Uh, good news is I already have a 3200 RPM governor spring in here. Bad news is I tore the pump apart just to find that out. But like I said, the goal of this video was to show you guys how to do this. So I'm going to actually take this spring out and show you all the way to the end how to take a stock spring out because it'll look just like this. And then I'm going to put it back in and reassemble the pump. All right. So at this point, we need to remove the spring. So removing it from the throttle shaft is the easy part. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Just unhooks from this little eye hole eye hole on the throttle shaft. We'll set that aside. Now this is the part you have to be careful. So you see right here there's a little spring when I pull on the governor spring. So that part that the spring is loaded onto is called the top hat. So if I just pull the governor spring off of that right now it'll go shooting back in the engine bay and I'll lose it. So what you have to do is with one finger maintain pressure on that and with the other finger remove your governor spring okay and I would advise that you have your new governor spring all ready to go for example I'm just gonna put the same spring back in but you would put your 3200 rpm spring in have it ready to go hook it on and then you can let go of that part and that's all there is to that. So what we're going to do now is reassemble it, but I'm going to add some components to it that are important with the reassembly so that you don't break this fulcrum lever. I see people breaking these all the time and it'll ruin this pump. That's what 800, 1200 bucks, depending on who you have build you on and how much the core charge is. So don't break this fulcrum lever. So stay tuned. I'm going to show you exactly how not to do that. First though, we got the spring in there. I'm going to get my throttle shaft again. There we go. That's ready to go. So let me show you how to avoid breaking this fulcrum lever. So if you grab the top half of your pump, this is how the pump was oriented. This screw right here in the back end of it is your full power screw, okay? That's the one you turn up if you want to get a little more power. Uh, turning that can cause runaway, so be very careful. But what you have to do to avoid breaking the fulcrum lever, if you look underneath, that full power screw comes into the interior of the pump and it rests against that fulcrum lever. So what people do is they leave this power screw here, they throw the pump top on and try screwing it down, and that screw just loads onto the fulcrum lever and snaps it off. What you have to do is back this power screw out so that the tip of it is even with the inside edge so that it can't hit the fulcrum lever. So I'm gonna loosen this lock nut and then back that out, but first I'm gonna use a Sharpie and mark where this is at so I know exactly where it was at and I can get it back to the same spot once I have the pump top back in there. So I'll do that and then I'll catch back up with you. So you can see my markings on there to know exactly where to put that full power screw back in. Now I've loosened the lock nut on here. And then on the back of the power screw, there's just a flathead notch in it. So we're going to grab a flathead screwdriver and just back it out. So 
So mine was in there pretty tight. So instead of a flathead screwdriver, I actually just grabbed a six millimeter ratcheting wrench and I'm backing it out now. So if we look at the bottom of the pump, kind of an awkward angle for me, but at least you guys can see. All right, so that fuel screw is backed out. You can see the tip of it just right there. So you don't have to take it all the way out, but you have to back it out of the top of the pump so it's not showing in here. And now when I put this back on, it'll clear that fulcrum lever. And then once I have the top end of the pump secured, I can then thread that power screw back in so it can push on the fulcrum lever, okay? All right, so reassembly, aside from that part, is just the reverse of tearing it down. So I've got my throttle shaft here and putting it up through the orifice that it goes into. You gotta clear this reference line. Gonna push that out of the way. There we go. Perfect. So there's the pump top and we're gonna start putting the screws in. So to get that back screw in, lift the pump top a little bit so the screw's seated down onto the pump top as far as it can. And just start threading it in. It is a pain in the butt, I'm not gonna lie. All right, that back one's almost all the way in. So I'm gonna set these other ones in and just work them in one at a time. And the last thing I'll do is cinch that back one all the way down with my pliers on the Allen wrench. There we go, all of those are cinched down now. So next thing we have to do that would probably make the most sense is put the full power screw, thread it back in. So I'm gonna change my camera angle so you guys can see that a little bit better and show you how to do that. I'm gonna just use that six millimeter ratcheting wrench and that'll work really well. So get that six millimeter right on the back of that screw and just slowly work it in. And then I'll just set the lock nut and check my reference lines and make sure it's lined up exactly how it was. Next, we're gonna put the throttle shaft all back together. So remember, we've got this spring with that plastic thing, that plastic thing sits between these two pegs. So just like that, the spring sits just under that black tab behind that front peg. Now, if you remember, this is where indexing this shaft is very, very important, okay? So remember the line in the top of this throttle shaft was lined up with the second tick mark on here. Also, you can't forget to preload this spring you have to kind of clock it backwards. I'm just going to use a pick. Pull that back. There's a lot to do here because we got to get this right there. And then we got to line that throttle shaft up. And then I'm going to have to turn the throttle shaft just a little bit first. So you can see it's not lined up. I'm going to get a flat head 
and turn the throttle shaft counterclockwise just a little ways so the splines will line up. So in order to get the shaft to line up with the splines, you kind of have to pull up on the shaft while you're, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys this. So, it may be hard to see from this angle, but this is not indexed correctly. This is indexed to the first tick, the top tick. So I have to kind of lift that up and move it one notch over, maybe two. There we go. Now it's on the correct spline. So then we put the throttle lever back on. Right there, that little pig comes between the two forks of that spring. And I'll grab my Allen wrench. Remember, before you put the next piece on, to put your plastic and your little metal washer on first. Right there. Then slip that on. This pig should show up right between the two forks of that spring. And then just use your Allen wrench and tighten it down. We're going to put the throttle stop screw back in. Next, we're going to put this banjo bolt back in the fuel return line. I believe it's a return line. Someone will correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. Now one thing I'm noticing, I hear a lot of people after they do this say that it won't start. So I'm going to show you one of the very common reasons. This wire right here connects to the fuel shutoff solenoid. If it's not connected to this spade, it will not start. Okay, so I just, I didn't take that off. I just bumped it when I was doing all this work and it came off. And had I not known that, I may have tried to start this back up and it wouldn't have started and I would have had no idea until I came and really looked around in there. So make sure both those are connected to the fuel shutoff solenoid. Okay, now we have to put this banjo bolt back into the top part of the pump. Lastly, we need to put our throttle position sensor on. I wish this was a manual transmission and that that was not necessary, but unfortunately it's and automatic. There we have it. So I'm going to button up the throttle linkage, the TPS, and the radiator hose, and I'll see you guys in just a second. All right, so there it is, all buttoned back up together. Everything's where it needs to go. All right, so that's all there is to it. So I haven't tried to start it yet because I'm actually going to have my wife come out and stand with a board ready to block it off if it runs away. Anytime you mess with the power screw, you want to have someone there to do that. Um, so I'll do that tonight when she's done with what she's doing. Um, if it doesn't start, here's kind of my process of uh, diagnosis. First thing I'm going to check is those two wires to the fuel shutoff solenoid. If those are good, I'm actually going to pull that throttle linkage back off and check and make sure that that is indexed correctly. Another thing that could cause it is if your fuel screw is not in far enough. So if you don't have it in far enough, it'll just crank and crank. Um, and then you'll get it in and it'll idle really low. And then once you start getting it into where it idles nicely, you can play around with making sure it's not going to run away. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, thanks again to Eric Gilbert at The Hungry Diesel for uh, giving you guys discount code. It'll show up on the screen right now. Go get 10% off at The Hungry Diesel. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it's helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments, Ask down below in the comments section. Let's see if we can help each other out. So until next time, we'll see you guys in the next video. All right, guys, real quick update. So I, I started the truck, started up perfectly, idled fine, and then I tried to give it a little throttle, and it killed it. Um, so again, like I said, I went through those steps of what I thought could be the issue, and I checked my throttle indexing, and it was off. So 
Uh, just like I said, it can happen to anyone. Make sure as you're putting the throttle lever back on the throttle shaft that you don't push down too far or it'll pop loose and the indexing will come off. And that's what I think happened in my case. So try that. Thanks for watching the video and we'll see you guys in the next video.